Hello and welcome to another Performance Architects How-To. Performance Architects is a business and technology consulting company that helps companies initiate and sustain big changes in their performance management and business intelligence environments and process. This video along with others on our channel should help provide some additional insight as you embark on or continue along your EPM and BI journey. Head over to our channel after this video or come back in the future to learn best practices, hear overviews, and take part in lessons we have designed to help you. We are focused on continuing to develop this community and we welcome any recommendations you might have for future content. Thanks and enjoy. So today we're going to talk about how to create a Hyperion planning application using the classic planning administration method. So first of all, you're going to want to log into the workspace area. And one thing to note here is that I'm logging in as administrator. So it's important when you're uh, logging in and creating a planning application that you have administrator rights. So I'm going to click login. And now we see our workspace desktop. So to begin, just click the Navigate button at the top left corner and Administer, Classic Application Administration, and Planning Administration. So the first thing you, you might think you need to do is just click Create Application. But as you may see pop up, you may see there are no data sources available. So essentially what you need um, to get started is a relational repository to handle all of your planning uh, metadata. So first we need to actually create a data source. So down here you can click on manage data source. And now create data source. So first just give your data source a name. And then select the database platform. So here you have an option of SQL Server, Oracle, or IBM DB2. So we're going to go with Oracle. And then you want to put in the server name of the Oracle database, the port number, which by default is going to be 1521 for Oracle, and then the database itself. And again, if you haven't created this table space or the database beforehand, you're going to want to do that. And that's not shown in this exercise. So now I'm just entering a username and password for the schema I want to uh, connect to. And remember, this is going to be populated with all sorts of information from your planning application. So make sure it, it's a blank, uh, a blank schema that has a uh, table space created for already. So then you're going to click Validate Database Connection, just to make sure you can connect to uh, your Oracle database. Now on the other side, you're going to specify an S-based server. So this is so that um, the database, the data source connection, can also connect to S-Base and planning. So now we're going to put in our server again. These happen to be the same thing. Then you're going to want to put in an administrator username and password. And an important thing to remember about this is if you ever change this, the password for this user, before you do that you must change uh, the password in this manage data source section <clears throat> so your application will still work correctly. So then we're going to click Validate as, as base Connection, and then click Finish to create the data source. So now you see we have a data source that's been created, uh, created successfully. But as you'll notice, there are no, there's no application assigned to it. So now we can go into Create Application. As you'll see, it defaulted to the only other available data source, the one we just created. So here within this screen, you have the ability to define what you want to call your application where you want to store it in shared services, and also whether you want to, which calculation module you want to use. So we'll call this database test. And a description. And then within shared services, oftentimes you'll create your own group for planning applications, but we'll, call, we'll stick this application in the default application group. The default instance can stay the same. 
and within the calculation module we can choose either business rules or the newer calculation manager module. So this can be changed later once this application is created. But for now we'll go with calculation manager. Then we can click on the next tab over here to define a calendar or to go through this process we can click the next button. So within, now we can set up our base time periods. We can say we want either 12 months, uh, just quarters as our lowest time period, or a custom level. Uh, for the custom level, we can change the, uh, the prefix and the number of periods we want in a year. So for instance, TP and 13 would create 13 custom periods in our, in our uh, time period dimension, all you know, named TP1, TP2, etc. Let's just stick with our standard 12 month time period. And we can choose the fiscal year that the planning application will start in. Note that this cannot be changed once the, once the application is created. So if we pick 2011 and we want to have 2010, that can't be added later. We have to start over. So let's start with 2010 and let's have our fiscal start month be June. <clears throat> and then we can choose a dist uh, distribution. And this, uh, this is an account distribution, 445, 454, or 544. And these are used for the breakback functionality within the planning application. So let's just go with even distribution across months. And let's do 10 total years in our application. The currency tab allows you to specify whether you want your application to support multiple currencies and currency conversion. So what you can do here is say yes or no, it will support multiple currencies and also specify default currency from the currencies listed here. Essentially what's th what this does is create two extra dimensions within your planning application. One to store the actual rates and the other to uh, store the currency conversion calculations. So we're going to say we don't want to support multiple currencies in this application. Now we have plan types. Plan types are the databases within your planning application. Here you could do things like have a budgeting application as plan type 1 and say an employee database as plan type 2 or a, or a, a, a capital expenditure planning application as, as plan type 3. Let's just stick with a standard uh, application, one application. So we can uncheck these two, clear out these fields, and then we'll just call the same, well, since we have a one-to-one -one relationship between application and database, we'll just call this the test database as well. And we don't want to initialize workforce planning or capital expense planning, but you can do that as well from here. So now we have an overview screen that tells us everything we've just done for, all, uh, for this planning application. So you, may, you want to double check that all of your settings are correct, because again, a lot of them are things you cannot change once it's created. So we'll say that everything's okay and just click finish to create the planning application. And depending on the speed of your connection as well as the connection between the, the database, the data source itself and the planning server, this process may take um, a few seconds up to a minute or longer. So once you have created the application, it will give you this, uh, this indication here. And now if we want to see our application show up on our list here, we can click Navigate, Applications, Planning. We notice it has not showed up yet on the list. If you just click Refresh and then go back to the same part of the screen, you'll see your test application show up. And now it, just to, to verify you've, got, you've created your planning application, it shows up on this menu. So that's how to create a Hyperion planning application.